Because the Bible is very clear that in the New Testament, the Bible says that Elijah must first come. Now, it's not the old prophet Elijah who was called up to heaven, but the Bible said that his anointing, the spirit of Elijah, and the scripture teach us that that's, that anointing came upon John the Baptist. And we're going to read it and go down through the scriptures. I was watching YouTube several years ago, and I went back to just make sure to refresh my memory. Mr. Louis Farrakhan stated on YouTube clip and you can go just put in Farrakhan and put Jesus and put Elijah. And in that YouTube clip, he declared that he is Jesus. He says that the historical Jesus was a true person, but it spoke of a coming Messiah, a coming Jesus. And he said that that's he said that's one thing he agreed with the Jews on. He said, Messiah hadn't come yet. He said Jesus wasn't born in Judea. Jesus was born in Georgia. Well, he's going to go to YouTube and listen to him out of his own mouth. And then he also says that he is that Elijah to come. He is Jesus and he is Elijah to come. How many of you know that the historical Jesus is the Jesus? And when that Jesus comes back, we're waiting on him to come back the second time. We're not waiting on a new Jesus. We're waiting on the historical Jesus. St. John 14 and 12. And it reads. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I do until my father. God bless you. You might just straighten that out. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works. Works are critical and crucial. Works are the results of our labor. Without works, even our faith is inactive. The Bible said that your faith is even dead. If, if the labor, the works, are not accompanied with faith, faith is dead. And then if you just have the works, busy with the Lord doing this, that, and other, but don't have faith. He said then, those works are dead. So you can come to church every day and work down to the skin and bone and you know. But if you don't have faith, that work is it's dead, it's inactive. And vice so versa. So he said, he that believeth on me, that continues to believe, not that you believed 50 years ago and now you. Some people rested up on 50 years ago when I came down to the altar and shook the minister's hand and they put my name in the book. I know many ministers right now that have bachelor, been bachelor for 30, 40 years in their 70s now and smoke no dope. I know a person in their 70s. Y'all stay here with me. Anybody here with me? So he that believeth, continues to believe the works Jesus said that do that he does shall that individual also do. Then Jesus said, and greater works. Our, our products of our labor will be greater than those works that Jesus even did. They will be in different areas. They will not be in the area of redemption. But they will be in the areas where Jesus did many things, produced many uh, results of his labor. Right. Jesus is not the only one that has ever walked on water. Right. Jesus is not the only one that has ever risen in one from the dead. Mm -hmm. But he says greater works. <laughs> We're going to get greater results. The Bible says, because I go unto my Father. 
Now, Jesus made it clear, when I go unto the Father, then I'm going to send you a comforter, which was the Holy Ghost and is the Holy Ghost. And because we know he's gone away, we know he has sent to us the comforter. The Bible says, when Mary saw him on the morning after he had arisen from the dead, she reached out to touch him. And he said, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended unto the Father. For he had died, although he was a man, he was styled as a lamb. And he had died for the sins of the world. And he had to present himself to God. A lamb without a blemish. Without a spot. Contaminated by human hands. And then once he presented himself to God, the Bible then said, later on, he came into a room where a door was locked. How many of y'all know that part? The door was locked and the disciples were on the other side of the door. And Jesus walked through the door with the door being locked. And he has promised us that we're going to do great works. I don't need that two or three people to believe that. I don't need everybody here to believe that. All I need two or three to believe that with me. Because in the midst of two or three that agree, he's in the midst there. So then the Bible says, and whatsoever, that's in that 13th verse. Can y'all say that word with me? Whatsoever. Now whatsoever, you want me to break that down? That means whatever. <laughs> whatever you shall ask in his name. He said, that will I do. I'll do it. Can I get you to believe that with me? See, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. I'm getting ready to do some greater things. And I want greater things to happen. I don't want 2011 to be like 2010 and 2009. I want greater things for it. So then, if I can just ask whatever it is I, I, I need, I'm, I'm asking in his name, he said, that will he do. But watch this. That the Father they be glorified. It's not for you to walk around with your chest out. Whatever God is getting ready to do in this new thing, it's for him to get the glory. It's not for you to get the glory. It, 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 see, 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 there are going to be some things, there are going to be some natural things, there are going to be some spiritual things, material things, there are going to be all type of things that's going to increase and become greater in your life. But it's not to bring glory to you. God will bless you so that your enemies will be jealous. But you shouldn't stick your chest out knowing that they're jealous. The Bible says that the enemies of Isaac became envious of him. He was so blessed. And I pray today that God will bless you also that your enemy won't be able to forget you. No, not in your Whatsoever you ask, but it's for the glory of God in the Son. If you shall ask anything, y'all still with me? So I want you to see anything is anything. You don't, you don't have to. And put things in a box. Anything you ask in my name. I will do it. Now, let's go into the old covenant because we're going to deal with the days of greater works. But before the greater works can happen, listen to what the Bible says in Malachi 4, 1, 5, and 6. And it reads, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, mm -hmm. and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. When you are left neither root nor branch, that means your whole family will be wiped out. And he said that day is coming that's going to burn like an oven. He's not talking about hellfire and he's not talking about the lake of fire. But there's coming an event in mankind history. And we know now, now we didn't know this maybe 100 or 200 years ago even. But on, with the advent of nuclear weapons, we know now what he's talking about. Even Peter talked about pillars of cloud and smoke. Yeah. The, 
the sky rolling away like a scroll with a great noise. We didn't understand that a few hundred years ago. And it talked about great hailstones in the book of Revelation mingled with fire. We saw it in, in Egypt with the children of Israel. The Bible said one of the plagues was hell, a uh, falling out of heaven mingled with fire. And when they test the first nuclear bomb, great hailstones in that mushroom cloud weighing some up to 100 pounds. The Bible uses the terminology of one talent. So he's talking about the day is coming that's going to burn in like oven. But it's going to affect the proud. Those that have their chest up out, taking credit where God should be given the credit. Y'all in here with me? All you need to do is give God the credit for how you are advancing in your life. If you have more of this and more of that, you have more educa education, you have more of this or whatever it is, give God the glory. It is he that gave you your breath. The Bible says you don't, you can not move or even have your being if it wasn't for him. So then Malachi tells us in the fifth verse, what? Behold, I will send you Elijah, mm -hmm. the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a dreadful day. Right. You won't be hot, hot. <laughs> and never say goodbye. Uh -uh. Got to, he has to do some business first. Right. He has to burn up something. He has to destroy something. He has to remove something. He calls it a dreadful day. Right. Read what he says. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Mm -hmm. The heart of the children to their fathers. Come on. At least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Yeah, because that's where the problem is with the world. The troubles that the world is having is because fathers are not taking their place in the family. We have single parent home. I hope I'm not meddling nobody. Sometimes not by our design. It's because somebody walked off from us or because abuse of but it, whatever the reason is, we, we're not doing the way God said do it. Right. So he has to turn the heart of these fathers to their children. Right. And then turn the hearts of the children. Because most of the hatred and the anger that children are facing right now, they have a problem with their dad. God, y'all not in here with me. I'm not a psychologist or a sociologist, but I tell you, I know that's one of the problems. And then men who had fathers in their home, they didn't have a good relationship. They didn't have that tenderness. And, I can't say that. 